Alright guys, Red here. Welcome back to Red's Resort, where once again we're back at it with another 10 things you might not know about Star Citizen. And I know what you're thinking, there's no way this guy has managed to scrape up yet another 10 things I didn't know about Star Citizen. But you might be surprised, so as usual let's play a little game. If there's even one thing you didn't know on this list, then you leave a like and possibly subscribe. And if you knew every single thing, then you leave an 07 in the comments. That sound fair? Then let's begin. So, when approaching these outposts for the retrieval op missions, the most efficient way to clear them out is usually by using your ship's guns. However, as you can see, when you're so close to the target, you have to do some weird stuff to get the shots to line up correctly. What you want to do is come into the settings and change this setting here. Gun's fallback convergence distance and just put it at around 100 meters. Then you want to get out your seat and then get back in your seat. This will then change the convergence distance of your weapons, i.e. the point at which they cross over each other's beams. And as you can see, this turns your ship into a ridiculously overpowered sniper rifle. Also keeping this setting at 100 really doesn't affect your day to day playing off the game because as soon as you lock a target normally, say a ship for example, your convergence will all adjust to that distance, so you're good to keep this on all the time. Another thing you can do at these outposts is go back into your settings and change this setting here. Pilot Weapons Manual Gimbal Mode Default Slaving and you want to change this to Use Look Direction. This basically slaves your gimbal turrets to wherever you're looking. When you press G in the game you toggle through Auto Gimbal to Fix Gimbal to Manual Gimbal. This Manual Gimbal setting lets you now point your guns in any direction you choose using your look controls, which turns this whole outpost assaulting thing into an absolute masterclass in Massacre. This setting even works with head tracking if you have that enabled too. The next one on this list I found myself by being the absolute easter egg cretin that I am and constantly poking around in bushes looking for something out of place or extraordinary. Now I highly doubt that I am the first person to ever find this but I couldn't find anything about it online so I'm guessing that means there's a good chance that you won't know this one. If you come to Orison and then make your way to Cloudview platform just outside the Kelto shop there is this elevator, which takes you to the Voyager bar. If you ride all the way to the top, and then make your way around the back here, across this little ledge, hiding in here amongst all this shrubbery, is this little guy. Look at him. He is officially the cutest thing in the entire game. I am going to call you Crunchy. Now, unfortunately you can't pick this little guy up, or for that matter interact with him in any way whatsoever. So, since I have absolutely no choice in the matter, I've just decided to live here instead of the hotel. I've got him some snacks and stuff, sorted them out with a wee drinking bowl. I really just need a camping bed and my Orison hobo life can begin. This next one I never put in a previous video because I assumed most people would already know about it. And that's probably a correct assumption, as I can hear you all thinking, oh no, he's going to do the cargo one. But there was something that I didn't know until recently. I was on some guy's ship, and he had a pet tortoise. And I was like, eh, how and where? And he told me to come here, but on a fresh new server. And sure enough, it's freaking Crunchy's dad. And you can pick this one up and take it away. And you can do all sorts of cool stuff with them too. You can put them on your dashboard and watch his little beady eyes roll around. <laughs> Look at that face! You can use him as a pillow. Also, he gets really cold sometimes, so a good way to keep him warm that he also finds really fun is to give him a little go in the sauna. And sometimes he likes to play a little game of hide and seek. Oh, there he is! And there he goes. 
Where the hell is he hiding this time, I wonder? Oh, there he is. I think we'll call him Crispy. Did you know that if you come to New Babbage Plaza and head down these stairs in the middle, there's a way to buy any colour of Moby glass you can imagine. Almost. We've got charcoal and freaking this colour and whatever this colour is and you know just like all the colours right. So now you can finish off that ultimate citizen fit and can blend in with the socialites and tech bros when you're out shopping for you know like avocado sandwiches or whatever these guys are up to. Have you ever tried to use your MFDs and as you're scrolling down the menus you're also zooming in and out and developing a cataclysmic migraine. Well, we have the solution for you. All you have to do is zoom in, then press middle mouse button. This locks your zoom, leaving you free to scroll around at your pleasure. To unlock, just let go of the F button or hit middle mouse button again, and you're now free to resume your other migraine inducing activities. Did you know that you can replace the Star Citizen Easy Anti-Cheat launcher screen with something a bit flashier? What you want to do is open up your File Explorer, C Drive, Robert Space Industries, Star Citizen, Live, Easy Anti-Cheat, and you're looking for this, splashscreen.png. You want to rename this file to something else, just Splash Screen 2 will do, then find the image that you want to use and change the file name to splashscreen.png. That's all one word, and the splash and the screen both have a capital. And also make sure to name it a PNG. The only problem with this is that the image size is pretty specific, so you might need to scale it down using some free software so it matches the original. The one I'm using was from Tactical KD over on Twitter and Spectrum. You should definitely check out their work. Next up, we have a very intriguing location called the Great Wall of Aberdeen. What you want to do is head out to OM1, then turn to face the moon's marker, and you just want to fly straight down towards it. When you get near enough to the surface, start pinging your radar, and you should start to see this anomaly appearing. This is the Great Wall of Aberdeen, and as I understand it, it just appears to be some sort of glitch in the way the terrain has been rendered or generated. However, personally I think geological features like this would be really cool additions to the already well sculpted landscape of the game, and I'm glad that CIG didn't patch this out. You can land here and get out and drive around and get your screenshot game on etc, and although there's technically nothing much here to do, it's still a pretty cool place to visit, and I think the backdrop of Aberdeen gives it this Really nice, mysterious sort of atmosphere, defo worth checking out at least once in your spacefaring life. Have you ever been typing something in party chat, only to have your weird out of context message displayed to the entire solar system? What you want to do is come to your Moby Glass, comms, and then come over here to manage and uncheck display on visor. This will completely remove the global chat from the comms HUD, and prevents you from entering text in the wrong channel for the rest of your session, which, let's face it, prevents all those mishaps, where that one guy in your party keeps leaking very precious intel to an enemy squad. So if for some strange reason your map doesn't work, or you're lying buckled in a heap because some fake space pirate put a one foot hole through your chest with a railgun, you can check where you are by pressing the tilde key and typing r underscore display info space 1. Your location will appear in the corner beside the rest of the information. Stanton 2 would be Crusader because it's the second planet from the sun etc. Stanton 2C would be Yela, the third moon of Crusader. It will also tell you if you're at a low earth orbit station and give you the names of outposts etc as well. If, on the other hand, you find something cool in space and say you want to be able to return to it, you can bring up the chat and type forward slash show location. This will copy a set of coordinates of your 3D location 
to the clipboard. You can then paste that into a text file and save it. The problem with this is that you need to keep typing this in the chat, which doesn't display to anybody else by the way, to continually get your current position so that you can then find the thing that you're looking for again. It also doesn't work for planetary bodies because they are constantly spinning in the 3D space. But definitely worth remembering if you're ever in a pinch out in the black. Likewise, say you die and you really need to get back to your body after some misfortune has occurred and you don't have a death marker. If you have a friend, do this before you call another ship to the hangar. Come into the beacons and set up a transport beacon and then select the first ship on that list. It normally looks like this weird little code here. This should be your ship and hopefully that's not too far from your body. And then your friend can then accept the beacon and drop you off. Have you ever fancied a job working as an air traffic controller? I believe I can make that dream a reality for you. What you want to do is get a ship with a loading bay and then land without putting your landing gear down. Now when you extend the platform, it should push you through the geometry. Now it's just a case of carefully working your way forward and behind the control tower and then dropping into the room through the wall. Inside you've got some screens here with departure and arrival info and some other random stuff. I guess what you could do is set your ship to self-destruct as you leave and then stand here like an absolute saddle waiting on someone to come in and land and then scream air traffic related abuse at them. I'm not going to lie though, that is... That, that requires a level of dedication. This isn't one of my better ideas, I must admit. And also, good luck getting out of this place alive, by the way. Just a warning. Next up we have another nice location that a lot of new guys might not know about. You want to start at Magda and fly to OM6 and then turn towards OM1. Now when you look down you should see these two big blue patches. You want to aim right into the corner of this one and start flying down. As you come down you should start seeing new features emerge. You're looking for this mountain range here. On the highest point of this mountain there is a place called Sketo Rock. Now I'm not 100% sure but I think the actual rock from Sketo Rock has been removed for some reason. In pics I've seen it looked like there should be a massive overhanging boulder. Now however I'm guessing it's that red ball. This might mean there's an intention to keep it in the long run, however we'll just have to wait and see. Right now though there is still this big nice rock sitting right at the pinnacle of the mountain, which is a nice place to land. And regardless of whether or not the actual rock is still here, this is still a really nice place to come. Nothing in particular to do but definitely worth coming to see with your space buddies for a picnic one day. You can even bring some buggies and race down this thing and, you know, die. Although I do advise coming in something a bit smaller than I did and also remember to turn your engines off. Yep. Absolute star citizen moment right there. Here's a few bonus ones that you might not know. If you come to Microtech Spaceport and turn around and head out to this nearby small island, out amongst the rocks, here we have a couple of little teddy bears having a bit of a sesh to themselves. They've got the beers in, they've got the tunies here, this little guy looks like he's had a bit too much to be honest, and they're just sitting here chilling, contemplating that one time when a child still loved them. Probably. I don't know. Such rich, deep lore surrounding this one. Sad, sad story, really. Up to a few years ago, there used to be an asteroid in Stanton called Delamar. And on that asteroid was a station called Levski. This well beloved station was never intended to remain in the Stanton system and was in fact only placed in temporarily for testing purposes. I got this footage from a guy called Viking Sid. They do a lot of Star Citizen content, there's a link in the description, you guys should definitely go and check it out. They've kindly allowed me to show it here as part of this vid. As you can see this place looked absolutely epic. Lore wise, 
it was always meant to be a part of the Nyx system, where it will serve as one of the main ports there. It will be a while before that system ever makes it into the game, so footage like this is pretty much the only way you can get to see what this place was like now. I honestly can't wait to have this back in the game. The place just looks so, so awesome. And that's it guys, that's another 12 things that you might not have known about Star Citizen. Big thanks to my Patreons, Laura Spence, and channel members, Nils Gerdes. And thanks to all you guys for watching, liking, subscribing, whatever, it really is appreciated. If you're new to Star Citizen, use one of the codes on the screen. I really hope this video helped someone out, or showed someone something new. I'll hopefully see you back for the next one which I hope will be 10 things you didn't know about Pyro 07 guys.